So just like in the previous video, this pin we're going to make here is going to be a closed end pin. It's going to be <clears throat> using a Churchill rollerball kit and I'm making it out of ebony and maple and walnut. But I'm going to build the basics of the body first out of maple and ebony and uh, veneers. So we're going to do it basically the same way we did before. Uh, the ebony off colors of uh, uh, the white veneers, the black and white veneers. I'm just going to alternate all those colors just like before. Knock it down, get it as flat as possible. And um, Get the end grain to line it up right. Oops, drop that one. Okay, I'm gonna use my one inch C clamps. Let that soak for a couple seconds. Flip it over. Let that set. I'll sand it all off. Let it set. And I'm only going to use um, a small portion of this. I'm going to make a couple of pins out of this. The top half, I'm going to use uh, walnut. Uh, I'm going to use uh, this figured walnut right here. So look at that grain. And then I'm going to put a Celtic knot on it. And then I'm going to use an ebony cap uh, for the top. And then, uh, and the same thing for the bottom. Okay, on the table saw, uh, we're getting ready to use this piece of uh, walnut here and to do the Celtic knot. And I'm going to do it's going to be alternating colors. Um, as an example, here is a uh, little jig that I use. This is a little one inch slice or one eighth inch slice. These are already a couple pieces of uh, maple I've already cut up. So um, with this little jig, uh, you see it's a little bit wider gap than the first one that I've shown you. And, what, and then I've taken four slices of veneer, two white and one black, because those are going to be my intersecting colors with the maple veneer. So I'm going to make sure that those fit. And that fits that fits good in there like that. So that's, that's my spacing that I'm going to need. So in order to get that spacing repeatedly and accurately, the this piece of veneers that I made right here, the two black veneers and the two white veneers, I'm going to put that as a spacer where my stop block is, and then when I cut my walnut veneer, my first pass is going to have the spacer in it, that, and then after I complete the cut, then I'm going to push that back the distance of that gap, which will open up the gap on the opposite end. and. You'll notice that when I make my first cut, just like here, it's not going to be a complete uh, all the way through cut. So it's just going to be exactly as you see here. It's still going to be solid on one side. That way you can keep the correct spacing all the way through the cut. Let me
there is the first little cut. Just a little bit too narrow. So that's a little bit better. So now that uh, that uh, spacer is out, I'll take it off the cap. thinner than this slice of wood here. So I had to accommodate that by going back and cutting the thickness of one more white veneer strip on the inside. So when I make my initial cut, it's going to have uh, three white strips of veneer, which are a little bit thicker than the black strips, and two black strips like that. And then as long as I do the same thing all the way around, I'll be good. Just make sure that you're your blade is the same thickness of the, of the uh, off-cut, your one eighth inch slices, and then you won't have any issues. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these in place. I'm going to cut these to, to, to length first. Okay, so just like before, I've got the, um, the alternating colors. I've got a white veneer, a black veneer, a, uh, a white piece of maple, a black veneer, a white veneer in, be in, that, uh, in that groove. So we'll go ahead and uh, use thin, thin, thin CA glue. Drop it in there. A little generous with it. Like I said before, you're going to go through a lot of this. Be shy with it because it'll fill any gap. So get on your fingers, try and wear gloves. It also works as a good gap filler, but you shouldn't have any gaps at all. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that to the bandsaw, cut that off, and then just sand it, and then we'll start our next cut. Okay, so our first cut is complete. I didn't mark it right here, but there's a number one here, so we're going to do a 180 degree turn for our second cut, our third, and then our fourth. So those are marked on the opposite end. So you can already tell that that already looks pretty good, the intersecting colors. So second cut, using the spacer in here first. That's going to give me the, the gap from the veneers. So we'll go ahead and glue those up, stack those in there. So I'm going to do the white, white veneer, black veneer, maple, black veneer, white veneer. Again, I want those all the way down. So insert that in there. Okay, so that's mostly tucked in there by hand. Uh, I'm just going to use the pair of scissors 
and wedge that in there and give that a good eyeball and that looks pretty good so I'm just going to drop some more thin CA in there And then we'll just cut it off just like the last time in the bandsaw and sand it. Okay, we've got the first, the first cut, the second cut. You can see that those are getting in there. Again, we'll take our, our wedge and we're going to go for cut number three. Make sure the wedge is securely seated. And make our cut. We make two cuts. First cut with the wedge and second one without it. So there's our cut there, so we'll take our veneers and our um, maple insert. Also, the key that I didn't mention earlier was make sure that your blade is a 90 degree angle on the bottom. You don't want a blade that's you don't want a blade that's that's not a 90 degree. Otherwise, you're going to have a little triangle thing going on it, and you're going to have to get in there with a 1/8 inch chisel and flatten out the bottom. Uh, it may not seem like much, but when you turn it, every little piece that you that you need in the middle is going to and get you your center. So okay, so now we're in there. So we'll go ahead and glue that in place. Fresh bottle of CA thin. that fills that slot. Any little, any little void, get that glue to fill it in. And then we'll just do the same thing. Okay, that piece is trimmed and now we're just going to do for the last cut, number four. The wedge in place. Insert the veneers again and 
light black, white, black, white, make sure those are all the way in. Okay, now those are seated. Okay, same thing as before, we'll just cut that off, we'll come back and sand it. Okay, so there's the Celtic knot right there. All four cuts. Now I want two of these for this pin that I'm working on, and I want to use another one for another one I'm working on to refix the top that I haven't done in a while. So I'm, I'm just going to use the same piece of wood, but the other end, so that's why I marked this side. So now what I'm going to do is just repeat the entire process that you've seen, but just on the opposite side, and I'll do all that off camera. Okay, so now that we got the double, this is a double Celtic knot, I'm going to cut each side off in half. And the goal is to make a cap that looks like this. This is a closed-in cap with this has walnut on top, but I'm going to reverse it. This was the body of the pen that I made. And this is a, uh, like I said, a Churchill rollerball pen. And this is a closed bottom. This is ebony also, ebony on the sides, maple in the middle. And uh, this, uh, the, the middle part of, is broken off, but you get the basic idea on how that's going to work. Um, I want a little bit more contrast because I have walnut on the sides, walnut here, uh, and this is um, maple, but I want that in contrast, so I want that also to be walnut. I wasn't happy with, with the way the maple came out. So I'm going to do walnut scallops, walnut here, the Celtic nut as you see it, and then ebony on top to tie the whole thing together. So I'm going to use three different woods, maple, walnut, and ebony. And then I'm going to show you the jig that I used to put these little dots in. I didn't, I just freehand drilled those, but they didn't line up correctly. But I'm going to show you the jig how to make that as well. So let's start with the rollerball upper. This is going to be the section right here. And I'm just going to mark that, get that space in the middle. I'm just going to use the, the the collar on the thing, and I want about this much ebony on the back end. So I'm going to just cut off right here at 90 degrees on this side, this side, and while I'm at it, I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. portion again right on the edge of that line that's where I want my cut to be Jig that I made. This is a jig um, 
that I made there. It's a just a V block that goes down uh, about three eighths of an inch, and the top half only goes down about a quarter of an inch. And it's just a couple of simple screws, drywall screws, to hold it together. And then I'm going to show you how uh, what I use this for. Okay, so here we are at the mini lathe. I'm going to drill this out. Same thing as before, using the four jaw chuck. I'm going to go and insert that, lock it in place. There's no gaps anywhere around. It looks like I'm pretty good centered. So I'm just going to go ahead and lock that in. Um, this calls for a 3364. So I'm going to start now with a half inch. Uh, drill bit and then I'm switching it out to a 33 64 inch for the top part Okay, that's a real nice looking hole. A little bit of blow right there, but when I put the veneers and the ebony cap on there, you won't even notice that, that that's there. And then the reason I had to have the vacuum on was because of the, uh, the fumes from the CA glue. It gets really intense. And then we'll just go and do the other one while I'm here. Okay, so here we are again at the table saw. This is the blank that we worked on. Uh, we just glued up. Uh, again, it's ebony, black and white veneers, maple and ebony. Um, these are the, the two uh, blanks, the tops that we just made. And then I'm, this is going to be, these are the two lower portions. So this one piece, I'm going to use two lower pieces, so each one's going to look like this. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, split that right there on the table saw. Cut it in half. Okay, those are those are cut. I'm just going to drill these out. Okay, uh, to make this pin here, we're going to need two longer pieces here, one top, one in the bottom. So I'm going to do the segmenting first. I already have it pre-drilled, and that's okay. Um, normally, I wouldn't do it. I just uh, lost a step there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and segment in the walnut, and I'm going to do the outside first. The first two cuts with the stripe on opposing sides, those are going to be uh, 60 degree angles, 
And then the two outside ones, those are going to be 45 degree angles. That way it'll give me a different height of variation on those segments. So I'm going to do both of those at the, at the same time, and then I'll alternate both. Go ahead and glue those up. Okay, I'm going to build this up, same as before. The white, black, white, and then the walnut. This is going to be a medium CA glue. I'm going to use the back the back side of my fence as a stop to keep it from sliding. I'm going to put some hand pressure. I'm just going to sight that a little bit and be sure that that's level. Oops. Okay, sighted that on and that's level and tight. And I'm going to give it a couple squirts here. Hold it, let it set. Okay, that side's glued on both of those, so we'll go ahead and cut the other side off now at 60 degrees. Okay, now that both those sides are cut, we're just going to go ahead and resegment those. Just hold that down a second, let, let it get seated, then give it get a squirt. Okay, both those pieces are sanded. And all we're going to do is we're going to cut the ends off here. And then we'll turn those, rotate the jig, flip it on the other side. And then we're going to cut... 45 degree angles. A little more.
So we're flipping the jug around to the other side now. Now we're going to do 45 degree angles. So we're going to position this first. I'll move my stop block to the other side. Again, I've got that notch right here on the bottom. I want to use that on the up, downside. So if there's any sawdust or anything that gets in there, that won't build up and prevent me from not getting the same depth of cut. Was the first cut I'm a little shallow so I need to adjust that stop back a sixteenth of an inch or actually the other way adjust it forward Try another test cut. And that looks pretty good to me right there. So we'll go ahead and uh, cut the other one and then we'll, we'll start segmenting that up. Okay, now that we got our first two cuts made, I'm going to go ahead and start my segmenting. Again, the same as usual white, black, white followed by the the segment which in this case is the figured walnut just like that we used on the top part for the Celtic knot Hold that in place. Give it a few squirts. Okay, these two have been sanded and cut, so I'm just going to cut the other side next, the last side. Okay, now we'll glue and glue these back up just like before. And we're going to look to make sure that that's even right there with that. And we'll hold that down. Slide it from the bottom up.
Okay, now that we've got all the segments completed, uh, we just need to trim that up right to that point. And we'll go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to take a couple of shallow cuts just so I don't take too much off at a time. That's actually good. Okay, now that we've got this end here, I want to put just a little accent color like I did on this one. And uh, I want to center it out. But first, I need to redrill these ends. So now that that's already set perfectly down the middle, that's going to work out fine. I'm just going to drill it out uh, for, with this end in the chuck and start my hole going in that way. And then um, I'm actually going to cut this on the table saw about a quarter of an inch up actually not that far about an eighth of an inch up from here and then I'll re-glue it back together on the brass though okay in the miter box I have a I have a spring clamp with a piece with the stop block right here um, this is my piece that I'm going to cut and you can see I have it marked so just like a pen I know which grain orientation goes with which side so I'm going to go ahead and clamp that in place using the pull saw it's just too dangerous it's too small of a piece to cut on the table saw it's not worth risking my fingers Okay, so that's one side. Okay, we're at the drill press again. Um, I made a special jig to cut holes in veneers. This one says lower roller ball. You can see lower roller ball. Um, this is what the veneers look like. These are for the lower section of the veneer. This is going to be for the upper. I still need to cut a few more holes, so I got a few more X's. These are uh, one inch square. You can see the the lines that I have scribbled on in pencil um, is basically one inch by one inch and uh, the, the holes on this side are a little bit uh, larger diameter than these and what I'm doing is I'm using upper and lowers of the, the El Grande roller balls for this Churchill it's just a little bit larger diameter than the lower on the, uh, on the roller ball so on the pen that I'm making on this closed end one uh, it's going to be a little bit different than this but I still need the uh, still need the, the lines to separate here okay so this is going to be the upper I'm just going to cut a couple pieces out of a small piece of veneer uh, this is the upper for the, uh, for the Churchill roller ball
can see how easily that cut those out. It's more of a friction cut. And I'll show you how I made those. In the mini lathe, in the four drop shop, I've got about a two and a half inch piece of uh, half inch oak dowel. And then I'm going to use this uh, plug cutter uh, to start a small taper. So we get that chucked in. Let's see. I just want that just so I can get a perfect angle on going before I drill it out. Now it's just going to line up my hole. Now I've got two different drill bits I'm going to use. One's a little bit larger diameter than the other. This is going to be my clean out bit. And then this is the one I'm going to use to, to drill my hole with. Builds up pretty quickly, so you have to pull it out. center it's not bad so anyway we're still going to use this on our on our inside and then we're going to need roughly a half inch 10 you can see my mark right there all we have to do is put that in there and I'm going to take a uh, did still Now all we have to do is now is turn this down to the inside diameter of this, which isn't going to take very much. So I'm just going to use a diamond tip parting tool. Trying to speed up. complete that tin and that's all the way on there and that's a really tight seal so now all we need to do is take a Dremel right here we'll change this out to a small one now I'm just going to rub up the inside a little bit on there in a second. But first, I'm going to do the inside of this. Turn this on. Slow it down. Okay, now the inside is done. I'm switching to a larger uh, Dremel tool for the outside. I'm going to do the outside. on it and that's all we need so now I'll just glue that up put a couple drops of medium CA on here and then to make sure that that is set on the other side I'm going to put on my tapered end on that, give it a little squeeze to make sure it seats properly on the back, and then everything is lined up straight. And a little bit of CA glue, or a little accelerator, and then that's basically all there is to it, to making 
one of these torque meters. And you can see the see the hole right there, and that's ready to go. Okay, so looking at our pen again, we see that uh, that the brass on the roller ball is much shorter than the body of the pen, so we need to make up the difference from here to here. So on the lathe, I drilled out this. This plug is one and a quarter inches long, one and one eighth inches on the inside. To see this mark on the pencil, that goes all the way to that mark. And if you look at the end of a Churchill pen, that goes all this drilled to the same depth inside. There is a small shoulder right here for a tenon. And that plugs into that and has the same one quarter inch shoulder on that tenon. So that makes up pretty much the exact same length of the end that you would have on that final. So I'm leaving a, a quarter inch uh, mark for a tenon here and I'm going to use that for the back and let me show you what that's going to look like so I'm going to build this up and I'm going to leave that end right there I'm going to have a middle section of maple and this one plus the plus the veneers that will fill that gap and on the end I'm going to put a, a ebony, an ebony cap here or if any, whatever you want to call it and then we'll glue that up. Well, so what we'll do now to sort of explain that up a little bit easier, this is a cutaway that I made. Um, this is the same as this piece right here that I just showed you. I just have that sanded off in half, glued in place, quarter of an inch into the brass. Uh, this is the same size brass, a lower end of a Churchill. And you can see that if um, I put this in here with the, the length of the spring inside there, that would make up that gap. So let me, uh, let me put the spring in. So it's not my day. So when this is compressed. You'll see the tip is sticking out here. There's, that is seated all the way in the front end, and the spring is in, so you'll have a good body of the pen here. This is a cutaway of the end plug, and that will be glued on the end, but that will be in, in um, ebony. And then, of course, just a piece of oak, but it's simulated for the length of the body of the segmentation. So that's a generic way of showing you how that's going to be made. Okay, so from here, this is what it would look like. And then it would just be the cap put on the end. And then we'll just go ahead and on the lathe, and we'll show you exactly how I turn this. I use basically. Okay. This time I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use my calipers. These are marked to the inside diameter of my tubes. If I can get it in there, so it's a nice tight fit. And I'm just going to turn that down in there to fit that.
ton of money. So now I'm going to use the outside diameter of the tube as my gauge. But I'm also going to take an outside measurement of that. My calipers lock that in place so that when I make my mark here, I'm good to go. I'm going to undercut that back side first so I can part it off. I'm back at the drill press. I've got a piece of ebony in this um, in this V-block jig, and you can see I got some lines in here. I this is a seven eighths inch piece of ebony, and I just relieved the corners, all four corners, so I can get an easy straight in bite on the drill press. And what I'm going to do now is these are crooked, not lined up very straight on this uh, on this Churchill roller ball these little uh, pegs on the bottom on the, on the foot or the finial whatever you want to call it so in here that, that I tried to eyeball so with these lines I just used a handsaw and a stop block to describe these lines in so I'm just gonna line that up drill that down and then I'm gonna cut off a small section about a half inch off and that'll be and then I'll drill a, a tenon out before I do that, uh, a hole for a tenon. And then on the other side, I'm going to drill the same holes. This will be for the cap, for the Celtic knot that, that we made earlier. I've got a little uh, quarter-inch mark right here in lead. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, there it is. Uh, I'm going to turn that down to a tenon, and that's going to go into the cap on the other end with some veneers. And I'm going to drill my holes for the plugs here so what are we using for holes for that off color we're just using some simple round toothpicks and I have a drill bit that's the same size and so with that we'll go ahead and start drilling straight down not going all the way through and you can feel it hit the middle where that other where they intersect those holes
Okay. Okay, it's those half. Okay, now that I got some lines there measured, we'll go and drill those out. Flip it over to the other side. Next thing you want to do is you want to get rid of those pointed ends so that you can just we'll just cut those off okay so here we are back to the glue up now uh, these are those toothpicks I cut the ends off so just like before I'm just gonna shove the toothpick inside here you see it's sticking out the end and okay, I'm after putting that in there I'm just gonna cut that off Where'd that go? Put it. Can make sure all those are seated. A little thin. Okay, now those are sanded off. That looks pretty good. Nice and even all the way around. So now I got to do is cut a quarter inch tenon on this side and leave a quarter inch off and then cut off a half of an inch after I drill out a hole for a tenon to uh, for the for the Churchill the upper and the lower. Okay, 
Okay, time for the final glue up. Uh, we're going to do the lower and then the upper. So this is the part with it that we added on. This is the tenon for here. So we go ahead and stick that through. The white, black and white. We'll add the tenon. Push that up. I'm going to build it upside down. As before, white, black, white in the air. Add the maple in the air for the middle. The same thing, the white, black, and the white in the air. Piece, make sure that's facing the right direction. And I'm just going to line these up. Make sure they look good. And just as before, I'm just going to do a dry fit. Clamp it together. A little bit of tension, not too much. Then I want to eyeball everything, make sure everything's lined up. the way through to the brass on the inside so I don't have to worry about trying to make sure that hits the brass. That's why I got the wax paper down there for some for some drips. Set. So that's, that looks pretty good. Now we'll do oops, some of that stuff works its way down the wax paper. So I'm going to do the tenon next. Um, same thing. White, black, white. Fitting the inside of there. Just do another dry fit. That's the good thing about these quick grips is that CA glue doesn't really stick to it, just pops, peels right off. So I'm just going to put a couple more drops of glue. I'm going to do the 
same thing on this end, just in case there's any gaps. this sander next. So just like before on the disc sander I just sanded these all the veneers off to make those look good. And you can see this one here. Now I just want to do one more thing. I'm going to relieve the edges of these corners so that when I start to turn it doesn't catch and break away anything. So I'm going to do that on the disc sander also. Okay, on this oak dowel that I'm using to turn the upper on, I still need a bushing. So I, since I don't have a sliding mandrel, uh, this is a low-tech option to make this bushing. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to turn this down. I've drilled a piece of scrap wood. This is a Zirconi. I'm going to, this is half inch, this is half inch. And I'm going to basically glue this in place turn this down to the same diameter as this and then I'm going to have a bushing and a mandrel all in one. So we'll do that real quick first. Quick little drop of C8 thin. I have my makeshift mandrel mounted with a half inch, half inch oak dowel and a zircote scrap. Uh, I have my calipers set to my upper bushing. This is for the upper, and I already have one glued up for the lower. So we're going to go ahead and turn this one down to size for the bushing. Vacuum on. That's just right about there. I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. And so that'll be my upper. Now I need to do the same thing for the lower. And the long end is for the lower here. Okay, so this one's going to be for the lower here, and I've got my measurement already set on my calipers, so we'll go ahead and turn that one down. Shh. <laughs> 
So before we start turning, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on the back side, but I don't want this cone to go into that. So I have taken a little piece of scrap I coned out right here, and I'm just going to apply a little tension with that. It's going to give me some good pressure, lock it in place, and we'll go ahead and start our turning. This is for the lower end. bushing we just made earlier with the oak and you can see the oak pretty much came apart um, I don't know if it was because it was too short or wasn't hard enough so anyway thankfully the blank wasn't damaged but that's okay off camera I turned a new one this is out of a solid piece of coco bolo half inch here the bushing here and this is the for the tenon to accept the blank that's going to go on and then we'll just go ahead and start over again or finish up from from this point
them out. Even though that was a little sandpaper. Okay, now we're going to start with the CA finish using some CA thin. I've got this down to a slow speed. Okay. Two coats of thin. So now I'm just going to work out those marks. scratches left. I'm just going to use some perfect pen polish and then that'll clean it up.
Okay, on to the second part, which is going to be the upper. This is the corners that have been relieved. So I'm just going to tighten this up in place. reason I stopped is I wanted to check and see how this was coming out. You see there's a couple little fractures right here, so I'm going to put some paper down and put some glue in those cracks. Let it seal anything up. I'm going to hit it with the accelerator real quick. A little more on that one area right there. Okay. Put any chip out.
Wow. So let's look at that. That looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Oops. Okay, we finally made it to the end of this Churchill closed end rollerball pin. Uh, we're going to go and assemble this right now. These are all the contents. And uh, we'll just put that together on the drill press, the same method as before. Let's start with the top. And here's the collar. Okay, that went in relatively easy. That looks pretty good. Just lower this for the next section. Okay. Okay, let's try that again, the spring. Okay, the ink is in all the way. And we'll just screw that in. Okay, and there's the, the ink. You can see that it's still got a little bit of a little bit of spring in it, but that looks pretty good. And then here's the cap. And okay, so that is pin number three, and you can see the different heights. And the scallops, those are the 45s, and then those are the 60s. And then you have the different colors between the ebony and the maple and the walnut. Ties it all together. And you can see it better in the picture, but that looks pretty darn good. Okay, that's the end of the video. We made three different pins in this last segment. I know it was a long video, a lot to take in. Um, again, thank you for downloading, and have a good day.